The last thing I'm going to study in the chapter of stress is the engineering versus true stress, in particular for metals. In general, if I have a specimen with dimensions length L0 and area A0, and then I apply a force on that specimen, the area in general will decrease from A0 to A, and the length will increase from L0 to L. The actual stress, the true stress applied on this material, is equal to the force divided by the actual area. However, depending on whether the area has been calculated or not, as the force is being applied, it is possible, and it always happens in material labs, that the stress is calculated by dividing the force divided by the original area, F divided by A0, and this is usually termed the engineering stress. We also studied two measures of the stream previously. The first one is the true stream, the natural logarithm of L over L0, and the engineering stream, which is delta L over L0, L minus L0 divided by L0. In metals under large deformations, we can assume that the volume stays the same. As the material deforms, L0 multiplied by A0 is equal to L multiplied by A. Using this relationship, I can relate all the previous stress and strain measures. Since I know, or since I'm assuming L0, A0 is equal to LA, A is equal to A0, L0 divided by L, but I also know that the engineering stream is equal to L minus L0 over L0. So I can substitute epsilon engineering into the equation for A, and I get that A is equal to A0 divided by 1 plus epsilon engineering. From here, I can calculate sigma true. The true stress, it's F divided by A. I can replace A using this equation. So it's F divided by A0 multiplied by 1 plus epsilon engineering, which means that the true stress is equal to the engineering stress multiplied by 1 plus the engineering strain. And the true strain is equal to the natural logarithm of L over L0. L over L0 is equal to 1 plus epsilon engineering, and so it's equal to the natural logarithm of 1 plus epsilon engineering. So these two equations, the last two equations, I can find the true stress and the true strain given the engineering stress and the engineering strain. So in particular for metals, if I take a specimen to the lab and I measure the engineering strain and the engineering stress, which is the force divided by the original area during a material test, and if these are the values that I get, I can simply convert them into the true stress and the true strain using the equations shown. First, I've calculated the engineering strain. Instead of the percent, I multiply by 100. So these are the values of the engineering strain. The true strain, I calculate using the equation that relates the true strain with the engineering strain. And you can see that they're really very close until higher strains. At higher strains, they start to deviate. The engineering stress is the same. The true stress is equal to the engineering stress multiplied by one plus epsilon engineering and so you can see they're almost the same at lower values. As the values of the strains get higher, they start deviating, and the true stress is a little bit higher. The reason the true stress is a, is a little bit higher because it's the same force by divided by a smaller area. And so you can see that the true stress strain curve is slightly higher than the engineering stress strain curve. 